So, the translations are out for My Hero Academia Manga Chapter 390, and yeah, as we all could have predicted, this was a very Todoroki-centered chapter with the conclusion of the Todoroki story plotline, and we'll talk about about that a little bit more, but first, right after this. Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Manga Man Drew, and I'm here to do my manga review for My Hero Academia Manga Chapter 390. And as I was saying earlier, this chapter primarily focuses on the Todoroki family and finally concluding this story plotline. This may be like one of the first major plotlines that have been concluded in the series so far, and based off some information that we got uh, when it comes to the most recent volume chapters, it's not going to be the only one, especially with what we're going to be focusing on next. So let's dive right into the review and talk a little bit more about this chapter. And for starters, the first half of this chapter, of this actually relatively shorter chapter, is a very strong focus on Ida as well as Shoto trying to arrive at the location of Dobby before you know he goes full nuclear explosion. And along with that explosion, we actually get to see and understand how fast these characters are moving to reach this location where Dobby and Endeavor are because it is confirmed that they are literally breaking the sound barrier, moving faster than sound itself. Which means that the speed that they are moving at is literally comparable to what Deku was doing against Tomura Shigaraki. And we can really see how fast this is by looking at Ida in this chapter and seeing that his engines are being destroyed by the force of him running. As well as that it's so fast that it's breaking away the ice aircraft that Shoto made and it's explained that he's making it at the same time that he's powering up his phosphorus while moving at these extensive and intensive speeds. To the point where even Tsukachi is looking at this situation and thinking, oh my gosh, All Might is actually a good teacher. But the main reasoning why we are focusing on them in this moment is because this is at the very least the completion of one of these characters' character, and that is Ida. Because Ida's main goal is to be a hero, but specifically to be a different type of hero. Where he is a hero that could fight in combat, but what he's been doing throughout the entire series is helping out his fellow classmates to achieve their dream, or as he would say it, allowing them to reach their true self. And how in this final moment, he realizes that he has finally achieved what he's always wanted, to be a hero that he believes that he is. And if that means that he has to not fight an actual battle, but be transport for someone else to do something greater that is something that Ida would do so the fact that we're getting this completion of Ida's character in this moment really just shows how we're really approaching the end and how many of these characters development and growth has been done throughout the entire story even if it hasn't been in the forefront like with Todoroki and speaking of Todoroki we're getting more or less the completion of his character as well with a slight little caveat with it because as we complete Ida's development, we get a little bit more about Shoto Todoroki and his development, specifically with his mother. And how we finally learn about the letter that he sent to his mother, and it pretty much explains about how he's been trying to keep up and finally meet eye to eye with his fellow classmates, either if it means like talking to people, having better conversations, or really trying to understand what it means to communicate with someone via their emotions, and how to get angry, sad, and even upset for someone other than themselves. Which makes sense because that's something that we've been seeing Shoto really developing and growing into, going from this person that is just filled with hate and spite and wanting to just do everything to spite his father, now into a full-fledged hero who is willing to communicate and talk to his fellow classmates even if he doesn't believe that he may have had like a great connection with them in the first place. And how this all comes together with Shoto finally reaching the location of where Dobby and Endeavor are and performing the move that he performed against Dobby in their first battle, Great Glacial Eiger, which is able to completely and utterly eliminate the power that Dobby has created, the heat and the force within an instant. And how he brings up this idea that when it comes to his origin, as well as the origin of Dobby, aka Toya, that it's very simple and that if they had had this confrontation earlier, then maybe things could have turned out differently, but he still has a lot of things to say as we see that everything is back to relative normality and that no one from what we can see was harmed by the explosion as we see other characters seeing what Shoto has done, the kids knowing exactly who is doing this and being happy at the fact that Shoto was able to save the day. 
So I think that this is a very great moment for Sholto, pretty much completing his character more or less, with most likely a little bit more to come towards the end of the series, but Shoto Todoroki at this moment has been completed. His character has finally come full circle, and now it's time for the Todoroki family plotline to come to its final climax, which is not with this big explosion of fire and ice, but with a simple conversation. Because you just have Shoto standing there saying that he actually was the person that was able to help get rid of this explosion, but he also brings up that he wasn't able to do it alone. And how he believes that when it comes to this great glacial agar, he doesn't believe that on his own he could have been able to defeat Dobby, and that he is not the masterpiece that Dobby thought he was which most likely ties into what we saw within the previous chapters for how the explosion was still going to go off, but that the temperature wasn't increasing, most likely due to the fact that you had three powerful ice users helping to cool down the situation and to cool down Dobby. And the interesting thing that we get in this chapter is potentially the death of two characters because we have both Dobby as well as Endeavor on the ground. And if you look closely, you can see that they both are heavily injured. Endeavor appears to be losing both of his legs and same can be said about Toya. But what is even more pertinent is what is being said in these final moments by both of these characters and what is happening to them at this moment. Because Natsuo brings up the idea that someone, most likely Dobby, is beginning to freeze from the inside out and that what's going to happen next is going to be hellish. But Toya, in this moment, has not calmed down. He may have cooled down physically, but mentally, he is still the same Dobby that he was at the start of this battle. He still wants Endeavor to die. He still wants his family to die. But more importantly, he himself also wants to die alongside everyone else. And as he is saying this, Endeavor crawling towards Toya is pretty much saying that he's sorry for what happened, that he's sorry he didn't go to Seko Peak, and that he wants for Toya to just explain and say how he feels about everything as he is also apologizing to Rei for the abuse, for Fuyumi for putting all the burden upon her, to Natsuo and pretty much ignoring him, and then finally apologizing to Shoto as Shoto passes out as this is most likely the conclusion of the Todoroki family plotline and how there may be an implication that both Endeavor as well as Dobby died in this moment. Now, it's not necessarily confirmed and they may still live when it comes to the ending of the series where they could potentially die later on or have like some final closure towards the end of the series, but I would say confidently that at the very least one of these characters is dead and that is most likely Dobby. And that if he does die in this moment, that he still dies with hate in his heart and that they were unable to really save Dobby from being Dobby or to save Toya from being Dobby, but they were still able to pretty much save him from himself from blowing himself up and killing a whole bunch of people, basically not making him an absolute monster. And with this, I think that this could be a fitting in for the Todoroki family because at the very least, let's say that Dobby lives and Endeavor dies, this will pretty much conclude Endeavor's arc as well. But Endeavor was never seeking forgiveness, he was seeking atonement and he always saw himself being separated away from the family. And one of the best ways for him to do that is to, you know, die. And even when it comes to Toya, his entire existence was built upon the idea that both Shoto is perfect and that he needed to get approval from Endeavor. And at this moment, he got both. So at this moment, the characters have for the most part reached their final lifespan or their final existence in the story and what they need to accomplish. So it wouldn't be far-fetched to believe that during this harsh battle where they've lost multiple limbs, Dobby literally has no eyes, he barely has a mouth, it is not far-fetched to assume that he is dead and that Endeavor died immediately afterwards trying to comfort his son and also apologize to everyone else. And something else that I want to imply for the reasoning why that I think potentially Dobby among them is dead is what we get at the end of this chapter involving Toga. 
where she, still in her twice form, remembers what Toya said about wanting to smile, and she questions whether or not he is smiling as she sees that the entire ball of heat has dissipated, and the implication may be that she believes that Toya is dead. Which would make sense because this would be the second League of Villain member that would have died, and Toga was in upon it or within the area of it happening, or we focus on her reaction to the death. So the fact that we are focusing on her in this moment may entail that we are going to be not only focusing on her plotline within the next few chapters, and the focus on her in this moment will not just entail that we are going to be focusing on her and Uraraka's plotline within the next few chapters, but potentially the confirmation that Toya is dead due to her being the last one we focus on in the chapter and being having a connection with Toya, aka Dobby. But yeah. Also, we have Uraraka with a determined face upon herself, pretty much solidifying that this is going to be the next plotline that is going to be wrapped up. And unfortunately, we're going to be on a two week break, but hopefully enough, I will have some content for you guys, so I will not leave you high and dry for another two weeks. But overall, I thought that this was an amazing chapter. It did not give me the same emotional feeling or the pain of crying, maybe due to the fact that we do not get confirmation that certain characters are dead, but this was very emotional, even with the spoilers themselves and even reading it more properly with the more proper translation. I think this is a fitting in potentially to the Todoroki family plotline and that I think Horikoshi may have handled this plotline the best among the entire series. Because not only does it wrap up Shoto's plot and his character, it also wraps up Ida's plot. It most likely wraps up Endeavor with the apology and potentially wrapping up uh, Toya's plotline, showing that even though he has been saved, he has not necessarily been redeemed. He does not go back on his negative actions upon his past and may have died still very much a villain, but a villain that they tried and attempted to save and potentially did. And I just really just enjoyed this chapter. And once again, this was a chapter that we knew for a fact was going to be Todoroki centered. And just in case I forgot to bring this up, that is mainly because the title of this chapter was Shoto Todoroki Rising, which is a telltale sign that this was going to be not only an amazing chapter, but a chapter focused on the Todoroki family. But yeah, that's all I really have to say on this topic for now. I may dive into a little bit more of it later on in the future, but this is primarily my review. I enjoyed the chapter, the art was great, the character development and characterization of the characters in the chapter were also great, and this was a fitting conclusion to the end of the Todoroki family plotline. So let me ask you this, what did you think of the chapter? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? And do you think that we're getting more of the Todoroki family plotline towards the end of the series? Leave your thoughts down below. I would really love to read them. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more content like this. Do all that cool jazz, and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye! Huh.